a huge amount of bizarre information was dropped on us. From a whole new interface to the two rarity system, hero stat boosts, and archetypes being introduced into the game. In the comment section of those videos itself, Raynad answered a bunch of the community questions. So consider this the community Q&A for the recent bizarre updates. So let's jump into the Q&A. This first one is from Arcane Winter. If a rare item shows up that a player really wants, but they don't have enough money for it, it would be really cool if there was a way for them to book or reserve that item, maybe for a little gold, and then have them show up that item up again so they can buy it in the next round. That way you don't beat yourself up over not having enough money to buy a cool legendary, well, I assume they mean a cool rare item. Rendered response was that he can definitely see needing something like that in future. Uh, they'll have to see once they redo the rarity system into the now two rarity system and see if they really do need to combat that sort of problem. But in general, I like the idea. You might be able to sort of pre-order an item almost and see it turn up in future rounds. Moving on, Victor Doe asks, what I don't get is, if it's an auto battler, then why are your objects 2D cards, essentially? This makes the battle phase so bland and uninteresting. By comparison, check the battle phase in auto chess. That is way more engaging, as you can clearly see what's going on, even without having any knowledge about the game. Reyna's response was that it lets you predictably know how your units are going to play out, so you can make unique synergies with other cards. He likens it to Slay the Spire where the synergies here are more fun than TFT synergies. Combining different effects to make new, unique combinations makes for a bunch of cool emergent builds to show up. How many 3D warriors I own does not. It also lets you know how fights played out. An auto battler is a bit of a clusterfuck. This, to me, seems like a bit of a contest of opinions. However, I do lean more towards Raynad's line of thought here. I do find auto battlers a bit of a clusterfuck. It's typically hard to tell what thing was letting you down and then also if we have these 2d assets cards it's a lot easier to plan build up strategies but also it's a lot easier to combine them into interesting effects uh, what i'm worried that victor may have missed is that this is not the final version in the final version as you may see in one of the later q a questions the battles are going to be a hell of a lot flashier Next up, we have a couple of related questions. Highlander Pony says that there's not much they can say right now, but the snowman fight should probably have snowy items. And Rayned does agree. The monsters all need a bit of design work, he says. Uh, so they'll feel a bit more themed. And then Pink Ward asks as well, are there plans to make monster encounters, whether they're bosses, normal encounters, or whatever, have their own special abilities? Medusa petrifying one of your items or something as such. Maybe special item drops from boss monsters... To which Rain added answers yes and yes. So yes, we should be getting specific abilities for monsters. We saw a little bit of this in the update itself. Uh, he showed that the monsters have their own skill, their own sort of hero power, if you will, that gives them a bit of flavor, but there'll be more to that effect. And then is the other yes to boss monsters? Who knows? Who knows what he's saying yes to here? But more monster stuff is on the horizon, including as Lone Exulf... Genjin Impact? I'm assuming that's Lone Wolf, right? Uh, what if defeating monsters gave a choice of an item or event or gold? Uh, and Raynard said it will. They're testing item rewards soon. So we won't just be getting gold for defeating monsters in future. There will be other rewards, hopefully thematically sort of categorized. But we shall see. Nick Lieb suggests that the win limit should be 10, not 8. 10 is clearer and more of an understandable number to strive for. Which... Originally, I sort of understood. 10 is a much more round number. 100%. Then Raynad pointed out the, again, 600 sort of IQ version of why this is the case. Because now you have to get to 10 rounds total rather than 12. Once you're full build, drafting does become a lot less fun. And they're always on the lookout for more ways to lengthen the time to full build. As is, he thinks those last couple of days would feel a little bit lame because you'd already be full build. You wouldn't necessarily be adding any more rares or doing any more affixing if that's a thing. So yes, at the moment it is eight. What he hasn't said here is that eight is also a more achievable number. If you have three lives and need to get to 10 wins, that's a lot harder than if you have three lives and need to get to eight. There will just be more people that end up winning. So we're on to a couple of essays. Let's start with this one. I love to see gameplay. I'm really enjoying the gameplay loop you're showing too. It reminds me of all the good roguelikes. I'm really confused as to why this is PvP though. 
It seems like this is mostly downsides since you can't even interact with the opponents and almost all of the games is just you and the AI. This goes on to suggest that we should probably just use ghosts, drop all thoughts and themes of this being a PvP game and focus on it being like Slay the Spire. Reynad then explains that it wouldn't necessarily sit right with him, especially considering they're looking at this from an eSport perspective. This kind of matchmaking lets them create modes where you can play along with your friends. Social play is a huge deal. They're dedicating at least some amount of time to this. He says that players also make for more fun opponents because they make an infinitely greater variety of builds and classes. Of course you can use ghosts, but ghosts will always lag behind the active player base. And especially if we can vote on which ghosts that we like, they won't strictly be entirely random like a human can create. They want the bazaar to feel more social, which definitely is something roguelikes will struggle with. Reynard said that he also really enjoys having leaderboard systems. It's one of his favourite retention mechanics, and you can't really have a leaderboard around stuff like Slay the Spire. It ends up becoming more of like a speed runny type thing, rather than a I beat you, I am stealing your MMR and climbing the ladder as I kick you down to the bottom. We don't like toxic interaction here, but hey, we still like to win and know that someone else lost. So, this next one from, I believe, Fab, uh, is a bit of an interesting one. I've nothing negative to say about the gameplay, it's looking quite good and promising. However, as before, I'm particularly worried about player retention. In this build, you show that you're already working on microtransactions, notably cosmetics. This goes on to explain how they're worried about Tempo putting a competitive PvP economy model in a PvE game. Obviously, the Bazaar does incorporate both PvP and PvE, so this is not particularly well founded, as Raynad goes on to explain. It's a competitive game, it's not a solo game, so it needs an economy model based on it being a PvP game. Just because you farm minions in a MOBA, you don't call it a PvE game, right? It has PvP elements, therefore it is a PvP game. He then also rightly seemed to take a little bit of offence, and on top of this, in true Reynard fashion, suggested that Blow Me was his final piece of advice to this person, uh, who didn't necessarily take it particularly well. I assume they don't necessarily know who Reynard is. I'm sure Reynard has a professional side, 100%. This game wouldn't have gone this far without it. But to us, he's still the noodle. Alright, we're on to some more quick-fire questions. So, Matthew Griffin says the game looks so official now. Any plans for updating attack animations to be different for items? Reynard's saying we're getting that system in a couple of weeks. He's excited to start getting into those. So, this is not soup. But news for us, we already knew we were getting different animations for different effects, but the fact that it's coming in a couple of weeks is pretty fucking hype, I will say. Um, if Reynard's going to be streaming the game a bit more, we're going to get to see that kind of soon. Rami Salem says, It feels weird to have two hearts show, but technically three lives. Why not have three hearts? And when all hearts are broken, the run is over. Some people agree with this, but as a couple of other people suggested, it, I actually kind of agree. I This was one of the theories we thought when we saw the new UI, uh, if you want to see our breakdown of the UI that kind of got quote unquote spoiled to us, uh, then go check out our previous video. I should link it below somewhere. Um, but basically, it's a system that games have fused. It may not be as prevalent as the system of you have as many lives as you have hearts, but it's definitely a system that games have used. You have extra hearts for the extra lives you have. When you're out of hearts, the next time you die, you die for good. And Raynad's answer to this one is check the animation at, gives a timestamp, and there was actually a really cool animation that happened when a heart breaks. Uh, when you lose a combat round, there's a really swift and uh, just majestic, almost, animation of the heart breaking and giving its lifeblood to your health bar. So it makes it very clear that you have two hearts and a health bar. Your health bar is your current thing. If that runs out, you break one of the hearts down, becomes your health bar. If that runs out, you break the last heart, into your health bar, then you don't have any spare hearts left. JJ Ninja 2 asks, can the rare item tags be a different colour? The price didn't make it very obvious to me. Right, that sounds a good idea, we'll try that. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, I may have gone a little bit too ham on the other side of this in a previous video. Uh, as a colourblind individual, just showing rarity by colour is a bad move. Do not do that. However, <laughs> 
a lot of people will find it more intuitive and will almost expect different rarities to be at different colors because that's how it's been done for forever. So don't just show rarity in another way, do it both ways. Have a color and then also have a different price tag or a different symbol or whatever it ends up being. I'm not Mexican, 1987 asks. You mentioned that it may be hard to follow when first getting into the game, which was the impression they were getting. I agree with you though, that with proper playtime, just like most strategy games, we'll understand easier. I'm curious though, if you'll be implementing an optional tutorial, just so that plenty of casual players won't be too scared to understand the game. Brainerd answered that there will be a tutorial, and actually even in the update, when explaining why the first turn looks so different, you just kind of get thrown an item. That's kind of like a mini tutorial for people that are playtesting the game. But at that point, he also interjected and said, there will be a real tutorial. So we know we're definitely getting some sort of tutorial to help people get into the game. However, if you have any questions or problems with the game at all, definitely subscribe to the channel because we're going to be covering it, throwing out guides left, right and center. Richard asks, are you thinking of putting in a drag and select number of cards and then sell them, almost like Legends of Runeterra, where you can select multiple cards and drag them out of the field? Uh, he noticed that a certain point in the video when he was trying to Rain was trying to sell a bunch of chocolate bars that that was taking a little while. Rainer didn't particularly answer this one exactly. He said you need to reposition items to the left or right a lot. So I'm guessing that means as you're clicking and dragging and moving items around a lot, a click and drag system wouldn't necessarily be that ideal. And I guess with there being no turn timer, you're not exactly going to be in Hearthstone Battlegrounds desperately trying to sell your board to buy a card with the rope burning down. You've got all the time in the world to drag those items. And yes, it can be a little bit monotonous, but at least you're not against the clock while doing it. So while he hasn't answered it, I don't necessarily think it's the biggest problem, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Maybe they do address this in future. Crimson Knight says they would remove the ohm symbol from the healing spell at 750. There was a healing spell... You, it was an instantly used item that would give you some regeneration. Anyway, the symbol itself. Um, Raynard suggests that this, and actually he said during the thing, I think, that all of, or almost all of the consumable spells that are in the game were largely just using old placeholder art. Uh, he actually goes up further here and says that they're mostly old sketches from the earlier deck builder version of the game. So these are very, very old sketches and may look nothing like the final product. They're just sort of things, assets that they had lying around that would help them differentiate cards while they test. Carson Kane asks, are there plans for an iPad app? That would be awesome, thanks. And Raynard said, definitely. I'm pretty sure they're going to be releasing this to everything they can. So if you have some sort of electric toaster oven, maybe you can play it on that soon. And lastly, Matthew Regan says, is there any way to gain access to the game to play in closed beta? Raynette says you can pre-order on playthebazaar.com to get in when it's ready later this year. So, game will be ready later this year. If you want early access, you can go and pre-order the game, and that'll about do it for us. Big thanks to my Discord community for collecting most, if not all, of the questions for me. Uh, if you're looking for a chill place to hang out and talk about the bazaar, you can find the link to that in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe as we get closer to the launch for the bazaar. You can expect to see a lot more content here, and for me to keep you informed and up to date. I've been Gamesplay Greg, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.